Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Sweet or savory and easy to eat, who doesn't love a good snack food? Chinese cuisine is no exception. We love our snacks. My parents would have several sweet and savory snacks on the coffee table while we watched a movie or Chinese television after dinner. Today, I'll share some of my favorite Chinese snack foods. Donkey rolling on the ground is a unique snack that's great for sharing. Glutinous rice and sweetened red bean paste combine to create a Chinese classic taste. My recipe for Chinese five spice is the perfect addition to spice up any bowl of popcorn. The flavors of the spices complement the warm crunch of freshly popped kernels. These savory pillowcakes are sure to please even the pickiest snacker. Nearly bite-sized, these treats are a flawless balance of crispy and chewy. From a mid-afternoon fix to a late-night nibble, these irresistible treats are sure to be your new favorites. And I think you'll be impressed with how easy they are to make. I just finished rinsing off the glutinous rice because I gotta get rid of some of that starch and some of the impurities like little rocks or the husk on the rice grain. And I'm making this rice today because it's gonna be used for a very special traditional Chinese snack food called donkey rolling on the ground. And there's some other special ingredients in this recipe that we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna talk about those ingredients as soon as this rice is starting to cook. Glutinous rice is also known as sticky rice or sweet rice. It grows in Southeast and East Asia. When cooked, it turns a bit translucent and very, very sticky. You may grind it to make flour for sweet and savory dumplings or wrap it up in lotus leaf with barbecue pork, Chinese sausage, mushroom filling, steam it, and that's what you get for dim sum. You may also add dried shrimp and scallops or pork floss or on its own with yucca root or roasted peanuts. When you grind it, you make a rice flour that's fabulous for sweet and savory dumplings. Red bean paste is made from red beans, or otherwise known as azuki beans, boiled with sugar, then mashed up. The beans are dark red in color and very similar in taste to kidney beans. You may serve a small bowl of red bean soup at the end of a meal. It consists of boiling the beans and sugar syrup. Some people choose to make red bean paste at home, but you can also pick it up at your local Asian supermarket. Now that our glutinous rice is finished cooking and cooled down a little bit, we're gonna add a little bit of sugar, about two tablespoons of sugar. Sprinkle that on top, give it a good mix. Now I'm gonna move this to the parchment and deposit. This is where it's gonna get a little messy. You may wanna get your hands a little wet for this. Now we're just gonna flatten this out as evenly as possible. It's almost like making a sushi roll. Oh, it's so sticky. Oh, this is a little messy. So try to make this as rectangle as possible. Get those nice edges for when rolling. So you get uh, a nice, even shape. Okay, I think we're ready for some roasted peanuts. So this is about one cup of roasted peanuts that we're gonna sprinkle about two handfuls just in the first half. Oh. 
and this was pre-crushed by using not a, not a knife, but actually a rolling pin. If you get some parchment paper, sprinkle some uh, peanuts in, fold it in half, you can roll, crush it that way. Or I like to do the less messy way, which is put the peanuts into a plastic bag and leave a little hole there for, for air to come out and then just roll away with the rolling pin. And now on to the red bean paste. We talked about it before saying, you know, red bean paste is also known as azuki beans. And you can uh, make your own by just boiling up some azuki beans with some sugar and water, mashing it up really good. We're gonna spread about a cup all over this. This is what I mean by being really messy. Okay, forget the fork, it's hands all the way. Okay, are we ready? Now we're gonna start rolling. This is the part, come on. Oops, already, who cares about that? We gotta get rid of the parchment paper at the end anyways. The parchment paper is used to help you roll. So we're gonna start like this, always pulling back towards you. But we're not gonna roll the parchment paper in. Gotta make sure you pull that away. And then roll a little bit. Pull this away. Roll this off the parchment. Okay, last final step. I didn't use all the peanuts because I saved it for this. Because it's gonna look like a donkey rolling on the ground in the dirt. Give this a roll. Ooh, it's sticky. That's why it's called glutinous rice or sticky rice. A little bit more peanuts here. Okay. Now that it's rolled, we're gonna get ready to slice it. The great thing is that we're gonna slice out the ends because that doesn't need to look pretty. But you can snack on this later. I like to make even slices, so I'm gonna go in the middle first, and then half here. And that way, it's symmetrical. Last cut. And now we're gonna go for presentation. So what's great about this is that you get a really nice sweetness from the, the red bean paste. And then you get that nice, sticky, gooey, gooeyness from the glutinous rice. And then to top it off, you've got that amazing crunch from the roasted peanuts. So you've got the best of all three worlds. Well, there you have it. Doesn't it look like donkey rolling on the ground and all that dirt with the crunchy roasted peanuts around it? Now you can eat them all by yourself or do your friends a favor and share them. Hi everybody, do you ever get a craving for popcorn? I sure do. With that nice big bowl, steaming popcorn all to yourself. Well, that's what we're gonna make today. And we're gonna add a little Asian flair, some Chinese five spice. We are gonna get some nice cinnamon stick here. Pop that into your mortar and pestle. And how about some star anise? These gorgeous ladies are beautiful. They're like little stars. Put a few in there. Gives it a nice black licorice flavor. And speaking of black licorice, we're gonna put some fennel seeds in here too. Just a little handful. And now, how about it for a little kick? Like some 
Szechuan peppercorns. And now we're gonna grab some cloves. Again, just a little sprinkle. And now get ready to do some mortar and pestle action. Don't be afraid if things go flying around. It's gonna happen. Really throw in some elbow grease here. This is a lot of work, but it's gonna be worth it. Whew. Okay, we're there, we're good. Beautiful. Now you can use a spice grinder, but I personally like to use a mortar and pestle. A mortar and pestle is usually made from stone, ceramic, or wood. The mortar is the bowl, the pestle is used to crush and grind. You use it to grind spices and rice into flour. Back in Vietnam, my parents had a large stone mortar with a two-foot pestle. Nowadays, there are various sizes to suit your needs. And now it's time to pop the popcorn. And today we're gonna use sesame oil because it's gonna provide that extra, extra Asian fragrant flair to it. Let's pour that in here. Now it's time to add the popcorn. We're gonna turn on the stove quite high to get the oil hot, and then we're gonna turn it down once you see the oil getting extra hot. So now we're just gonna wait. We're gonna coat the popcorn kernels with the oil, and now we watch the magic happen. Yep, now it's in action, here we go. If you can count two seconds in between each pop, that means it's ready. One, two. Let's turn off the heat. Whoa! Now that the popcorn's ready, we're gonna use that five spice and sprinkle some on top. You can put on as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna put on a lot. Well, there you have it, Chinese five spice popcorn. Enjoy. today with a special guest. This is my friend Renee, because she's got extra hands here, so we can <laughs> fold and make pillowcakes. Let's get started. Do you want to hand me the minced onion? Oh, yes. Voila. What should I do? Well, you should start cutting that carrot really finely. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll peel it first. Sure. While you do that, I'm going to start cooking the onions. I've never had these before. Well, I have a feeling you're probably gonna eat my share. Uh, <laughs> Jane, yeah. do I have to start like this? Yeah, or, just okay. cut the little bit of the top off. And since we won't be using all of the carrot, let's cut about up to there. Okay. <gasps> Go for it! All right. Okay, Okay. make a really thin slice along this edge here, because then what you're doing is you're making it um, a stable, flat surface for your carrot. Let it drop. Now. Cut it into slices. Okay. Super fun. So this is dicing? Well, you're getting there. You're prepping for it to dice. So you're slicing it first, okay. and now you're gonna kind of just line up a few like this, and then cut them into little strips. Okay. So now you're like julienning them, like cutting them into little matchsticks. And so now I just do this? Yep, just go for it. Perfect. Yeah, so this is sweating up nicely. And once you're done dicing up the carrots, we'll just throw that in here. So oh my that's gosh. gonna be about a quarter of a cup. 
Okay. How you doing? Holy smokes, you're working way faster. Am I? I thought it was going slow. No, so you're I getting can, the hang can... of it. Yes. Do you want to toss that in here? Yeah. Scoop yes. it up. Toss. If you miss a few, that's okay. Okay, now we're just going to stir a little bit. We just got to wait for the carrots to get a little bit more tender. All right, the carrots are ready. Want to hand me the ground pork? Oh, yeah. So that's about 200 grams of ground pork here. Okay. Toss that in. Mm. Would you do me a favor and open that bottle of oyster sauce? Yes. About five teaspoons. Okay. Kay. You said five tablespoons? Teaspoons. Oh, teaspoons. <laughs> teaspoons. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Yep. Ooh, mm -hmm. look at that color. Yeah, it smells very good. Mmm. Mm. Have you had pillowcakes before? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Is this your recipe? It's my mom's. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. She ki kindly divulged her secret to me Ooh. earlier this year. Really? She's like, hey, have you ever had pillowcakes? They're my favorite snack as a little girl growing up. Just buy them from a vendor before heading into school and then after school before going home for dinner. You yeah. buy them from a vendor? Yeah. <laughs> for five cents oh for my gosh. one. That's delicious. They actually mm -hmm. sound like a comfort food. <laughs> they are. Yeah. And so that makes pillowcakes a really good afternoon snack, about 3, 2, 3 p.m.-ish. Mm -hmm. Now that our filling is cooked and cooled, we're ready to start folding. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. So you kind of have to peel one here. Okay. Your turn. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Okay. Ooh, they feel so soft. Pillowy, I dare say. Yes, yes. yes. I'm going to put in a little bit of filling. So I'm going to put about an overflowing teaspoon, maybe okay. a teaspoon and a half. Okay. Then you're going to dip your finger in this little bit of water. Do, 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 do. Edge it with the water. Edge it to make it stay. Actually, I'm going to go all the way around just in case, because this is really important. If it doesn't stick, when you, it hits the, the hot oil, it's going to pop open, and then all the, this filling will oh, no. come out. Make sure we match the edge here and press down hard. You may even want to do this. Just squeeze it down a little okay. bit. All right. Oh, my God. cake. Ta-da. I'm going to start frying. Whoa. I told you earlier that I am super intimidated by deep frying. Why? I've never deep fried before, and I, oh. I didn't think it was possible for just a regular girl to deep yeah. fry. Get a nice size pot, fill it with about, mm, I'd say two inches of, of oil, and then turn it on high until it's, when you put a chopstick or something in it, until it starts bubbling away from the, the chopstick, and then you know it's ready. Okay. Yes. Now that you got a few on the go, would you mind passing me one or two of them? You're the best friend ever. <laughs> mm. well, Thank you. There's air in this one. Is that is okay? That's okay. And that's the whole purpose about pillowcakes is that they're going to puff up like a pillow. Ooh. Lovely. Mm. They're puffing up very nicely. They look amazing. So you want to wait until they're this beautiful golden brown. It's a nice bonding experience. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like dumplings are the ultimate like cultural unifier. Yes, all cultures have some form of dumplings. So all we really need are these wrappers, mm -hmm. the filling, a pot, some oil, and that bad thing? What's yes. That? So this is called a spider. It's like a strainer, but better because it, it, um, it doesn't have those tiny little holes. Last one. Mm. Ching, this smells so good. Oh, I can't wait. It's very hard to resist right now. Mm-hmm. So when you serve them, they're completely cool? Yeah, you want them to um, cool down a little bit because if you bite into them now, with all that hot oil, you don't want your mouth to get burned. Mm -hmm. 
And do they last or do you have to eat them all in one go? You should eat them the same day you cook them, otherwise they get a little soft. But if you do have leftovers, just pop them in the oven for a little bit, like 350 for about five, 10 minutes-ish, till they crisp up and harden again. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna guarantee we won't have leftovers. <laughs> nice. So I think this is ready to be plated. Mm. Are you counting to see how many you're gonna yeah, snag Make on? sure that I get half exactly. Looks beautiful. Okay, we're allowed to eat one? I think we should just go in. All right. Have you found the one you're gonna yes. attack? Yes. Me too. All right. Go! Cheers! Cheers. always look forward to snacking as a kid and the great thing about my parents is that they encouraged it. <laughs> so the pantry is always filled with numerous types of snacks. My favorite were prawn crackers. Oh, I could eat a bag to myself as a kid and even now hand over that ginormous jumbo family size because I will sit down and eat uh, I'd say I eat uh, three quarters of that bag to myself and still feel sick, but guess what? I'd polish off the rest a little bit later. Donkey rolling on the ground is a traditional Chinese snack food. So you got the sticky rice, the red bean paste, and combined with that layer of crunchy roasted peanuts is definitely a party in your mouth. My Chinese five spice popcorn is sweet, salty, it's black licorice tasting. Oh, it's delicious. So you definitely want to make a large bowl for yourself. Pillow cakes have a nice, crispy, crunchy texture from the deep frying, but when you bite into it, it's like soft like a pillow with your your filling in. So Crispy, succulent, crunchy, oh, it's got it all. People can't get away from snacking. Why? Because you're gonna get hungry throughout the day, right? You gotta have those little pockets of time where you want a little something savory, maybe you've got a sweet tooth and need to hit that spot. So snacking, that's the way to go.